Shadow box for five minutes and then we knock off. Keep on throwing those short punches. How does the kid look to you, Mike? Looks pretty sharp, Sam. I don't think you've got anything to worry about. I wish you were right, Mike. I got plenty to worry about. That's why he called you up here. I've been a punching bag a lot of times, Sam, but I never applied for the job. We got sparring partners. And the only bag I'm worried about is the one I think this fight's in. Come on, Sam. You've been reading too many pulp magazines. You've been around a fight game too long to get jittery two days before a fight. It isn't the jitters, Mike. My kid should win easy. He's three to one. But there's something funny going on around this camp. Hi, kid. Who's winning? <laughs> Here's what I mean. It's his brother, Joey. Everything looks great, Sam. Look, I'm gonna blow. I got a date in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Joey. You don't know my friend, Mr. Barnett, do you? Mike Barnett, the copper? Private investigator and public fight fan. Yeah? What side of the street you working up here? Sam Worth's side. I'm an old friend of Sam's, and I'm a Larry Rob fight fan. Ain't that grand. Now we got nothing to worry about. See you later, kid. Time, Larry. Come on over here. Yeah, I thought you said five minutes. I changed my mind. I want you to meet Mike Barnett. Hi, Larry. Hey, I heard about you. What's Sam here been doing? Stealing gym towels again? You checking up on Sam? No, you. What do you mean? I'm an old fan of yours, Larry. I just want to make sure you're sharp. I'm sharp. I'll win easy. Hey, Grogan. Come on, I want that shower now. And I'll take that rub down. I've been in this business 30 years. I never did like relatives around the camp. I don't get it, Sam. Not liking Joey is one thing, but what makes you think that Larry's not leveling? A lot of things, Mike. It's the two of them coming back from five miles of road work without even having sweated up. It's the way they're always whispering and the way they clam up when I come by. It's Joey himself. He's a loudmouthed little chiseler. Why don't you get rid of him? I tried. The kid says, no Joey, no, no fight. It ain't like him, Mike. He never used to have Joey around him before, and now I can't keep him apart. What does Joey do? It beats me. He just came in from out west somewhere. Well, what do you want me to do, Sam? I want you to stick around until we break camp. I'd feel a lot better. Okay. A little outdoor life wouldn't do me any harm. Hey, I got gin this time. Three, four, six. That isn't gin. Uh, uh, I got a deal over. Uh, aren't you home early, lover boy? Don't worry about me. What do you say, kid? You ready to hit the sack? Yeah, in a second. I want to finish this game. Better hit it, huh? Hey, where are you going, champ? I'm going to hit the sack. Uh, See what I mean? Give me Cahosta Falls, New Jersey. Three, two, three. Yeah. Hello, Danny. Oh, Max. This is Joey. I'm down the road at the camp. No, it's all right. They're all outside. Listen, he's still here. The Seamus. No, he just hangs around with Sam Worth. No, he doesn't ask any questions, but I still don't like it. Huh? Yeah, okay. I'll see you tomorrow morning on the road. Hello? Hello, Dan? Hello. Hey. Mind if I come along with you? Might as well get a little road work as long as I'm up here. It's five miles, Barnett. I've chased younger men than you down alleys longer than that. All right, if you can keep up. I can pot that copper from here, Daddy. Hey, put that down, stupid. I'll do the driving. Cowboys play rough. Did you get hurt? No, just took my leg. 
You boys better go on. I'll get back to camp. I'm bushed anyway. Stewing us up a couple of drinks. Hi there, kids. Welcome to New Jersey. What are you going to have? Nothing for me. Hey, you almost hit that Seamus back there. I thought you said there wasn't going to be any rough stuff. Oh, no, Larry. The car just got a little bit out of control, that's all. Then you're a lousy driver. You're a lousy liar, too, because I don't believe it. Get one thing straight. You ain't doing us no favors. You're doing a favor for Joey. What do you mean? Well, your ever loving brother's 50 grand into us, remember? Yeah, I know all about that. And you know how we're going to get it back, don't you? I know how you'll want to get it back. Oh, we ain't tough to get along with. We're uh, very reasonable gents. That's right, Larry. Gee, Danny and Max have been very patient. This means a lot to them. Yeah? Well, this means a lot to me, too. Look, if I win this person with the tiger, I'm in line for something bigger than the garden and the title. Makes it more sociable. That's one way of looking at it, kid. But there's another way, too. It goes like this. You don't win, Joey don't lose. You win, Joey loses. Yeah, but if I win... Then I come into the big money. So I'll pay off all Joey's debts. Every cent he owes you. It's not as easy as that, honey. Let me tell him, baby. Look, Larry, this ain't no home loan society. There's more involved than what I owe them. The boys are down on this fight. The dough is better, three to one. Not only do I get out from under my 50 Gs, but there's 20 more in it for me. Right, Danny? Right, Joey. Yeah? Well, what do I get out of it? You'll get a brother. Okay, okay. I'll do it. Oh, honey, I hear you. Come on, we'll drop you off there to camp so you don't have to run all the way back. You can save your roadway for your next fight, huh, kid? <laughs> Come on, back. What took you so long? Oh, Barnett tagging along, and the accident. Yeah? What happened? You mean Barnett isn't back yet? No. Anything wrong? Ah, uh, some crazy driver almost ran him down. He's all right, I guess. Just twisted an ankle. No kidding. It's funny he didn't say anything about that. He just called from the village. Said he'd be back in time for the afternoon workout. Toss the ball and cool off. Take a shower and relax. Come on. Come on. I don't figure it, Mike. This guy's training as a fighter instead of a guy who's going into the tank. What'd you expect him to do? Practice half gainers? See you later, athlete. I'm off and running. Carol? Smart boy. Hey, Joey. Yeah? Going into town? Maybe. Mind if I come with you? I gotta see a man. About a dog? That's a perfect description.
This looks like where we did our road work this morning. Yeah. Well, as I was saying, you seem to be a pretty busy guy around this camp, Joey. I got a lot of things to do. Like what? Like none of your business. No, I mean, what do you do? Help out with the arrangements, like troubleshooter? Maybe fixer's the word. Why'd you say that? I mean, I think the fix is in. What round's the dive gonna be in, Joey? All right, this is where you take your dive, copper. Get out! D. Copper on delivery. Yeah, what happened? What happened is he knows. Everything? Yeah, everything. Not quite. You still haven't told me what round. Oh, if he's wise to it, who else is? Sam? I know Sam. If he knew, he'd close down camp and run screaming to the commissioner. No, this joker mustn't have told him yet. He ain't gonna tell him. I'll check the door. He sure ain't. Nice one, Joe. No. Hello, Papa. Next time you got a gun on the guy, you keep it on him, see? Somebody tell me who he is. That's the stooge of Sam Waits. Where do you want him? Well, he said he wanted to go downstairs. Well, that's all I want to know. All right, when he stops bouncing, we'll find out what he knows and who else knows about it. Max, you go downstairs yeah. put the bars in the cellar window. Okay. Now, look. Sam Worth is going to want to know what happened to his gumshoe pal. The first thing we got to do is make him stop wondering. Now, Joey, get on the phone and call the camp. Well, I tell him. I'll tell Sam that Mike Van Eyck got called back to New York on a big case. Tell him to see him after the fight. Yeah, Sam won't buy that. Not from me, he won't. The what? He don't know where we are. They break camp tomorrow morning, tomorrow night's the fight. What's he going to do? Get excited and start checking, maybe. Where's he going to check? Okay. I'll call him right now. Hello, miss. Give me 383R. Hello. Barnett asked you to call? What about? You know when we left camp. So he got off in the village and made a call. When he came out, he said a case he had in New York warmed up on him and he had to take off right away. I drove him to the station. He told me to tell you that he'd see you in New York right after the fight. There wasn't time, Sam. He just made the train. That's all he said, Sam. I guess he was in a hurry. Hey, Sam, can I talk to Larry? No, he's in the sack, and I ain't waking him. Now, you'll see him at the hotel tomorrow after the weigh-in. Yeah, sure, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Operator, get me New York City. I want you to get me Mr. Mike Barnett's number. That's right. Keep ringing and call me back. Too quiet for me. I wish I was in Vegas. Well, this fight's over, baby. We'll both be in Vegas and points west. Sure, Joey. Sure. After the fight, everything's going to be all right, ain't it, Joey? Honey, you got aces wired. How about a little drink? Let's all have one. I'll make them. You know, Danny, I was wondering, how are we going to keep Barnett quiet after the fight? Are you kidding? No, I was just thinking. All right, got the thinking. After a fight, there ain't gonna be no Barnett. You wouldn't kill him, would you, Danny? Why not, Joey? We were gonna kill you. Yeah, 
And you're nowhere. This guy's the big number. I guess I'll hit the sack. All right, Julie. Sleep tight. How much longer does this go on, Danny? Ah, uh, take it easy, baby. Just another 24 hours. Until that referee counts 10 over Joey's little brother. Well, I'm fed up, Danny. Up to here with that redneck Logan. You did great, Carol. Well, it better work, that's all. Well, it's working now, ain't it, honey? I know, Danny, but... Well, I don't like anybody else grabbing at me but you. Nobody will, baby. Not after tomorrow. Hey, Max. Yeah? This thing's in a bag. Yeah. Get in the car and go up to New York and put up the last 20 grand. You can get back here by tomorrow morning. Okay, but do you think it'll move the odds? Spread it around. The odds will hold. Okay, I'll do it. It's 7.15. What's holding up Sam? He's on the phone. He's been on the phone all night. Well, we better get going or we're going to miss the weigh-ins. Still no answer on that bonnet call, eh, miss? All right, cancel it. I'm going to New York. Any calls for me, I'm at Fairmont 17640. Got that? All right. Thanks for trying. Spread it around easy. The price will hold steady. Good. How much does that make now? It's a hundred on the nose. How do we whack it? I had the same as always. Sixty me, forty you. How about little Joey? Hey, that creep. He won't know he ain't got nothing until he tries to spend it. There's coffee in the kitchen. Okay. My brother's not taking any dive. Get that? No dive. You've got to get word to him. Change of heart if the odds go down. Listen, Barnett, I don't have any use for you, but right now we're both in the same lake. These guys are double-crossing me. Really? Why don't you come with me and tell Larry yourself? I got unfinished business upstairs, but I want Larry to win that fight. No, not that way. They're up there in the kitchen. Out this way. I want you to keep moving straight for those woods. Don't be a fool, Joey. Come with me. Shut up, Barnett, and start moving, or I'll use this on you. Come in. I gotta talk to you. We're getting out of here. Get your things. Getting out of here? Is anything wrong? Mummy, hurry up. We ain't got much time. Well, look, honey, uh, tell me about it while I get organized. They're trying to double-cross us, honey. I heard them. They ain't cutting me in. Ain't cutting you in, Joey. What do you mean? That don't sound right. I heard them, honey. I heard them. But I fooled them. I sprung Barnett out of the basement. He'll be in New York in a couple of hours, and he'll tell Larry. Oh, that was real smart of you, Joey. What are we going to do now? We're getting out of here. You and me. We're going to New York, and we're going to watch Larry win that fight. Then we're going to get married. That sounds wonderful. Do you love me? Oh, baby, do I love you. What happened? Hey, what's going on here? Plenty. Get the car ready. We're going to New York. I'll tell you about it later, but we got to get there ahead of Barnett. 203 pounds. What's the matter, son? Nervous? He always gets a little worked up, Doc. He ain't been around long, you know. Nothing wrong, is there? Well, nothing serious. But his heart's a bit fast. Huh. Let's go. Sam, Doc, Come on, here's the phone. Hi. Captain Lundquist, please. 
Captain. Mike Barnett, I'm at the boxing commission. Yeah, can you tell me what the Jersey State Police reported? I was afraid of that. Yeah, he's here. Yes, sir, I'll take care of it. Oh, I think they're coming in now. All right, you guys yeah. outside. Yes, them. Right, Captain. All right, I see you a minute. You too, Sam. What's the matter? The lease run out in this place? Sit down, Larry. I got something to tell you. Yeah, like what? This isn't going to be easy to take. It's about Joey. What about Joey? Joey's dead, Larry. I don't believe it, Barnett. And if this is one of your cops... I got it from the police. That's where I just got it. How did it happen? Some of his friends were planning a double cross, and Joey found out. He got me away, but he wouldn't come along. The last thing he said was, tell Larry to win the fight. They killed him. I'll call the fight off, Larry. No, Sam. This is the one I win. These two men are from headquarters. It's their case now, not mine. They'll be with you until the end of the fight. I've got to get over to see the Jersey State Police, but I'll be back at my apartment tonight in time to watch the fight on television. Good luck, Larry. I'm still in your corner. Mm -hmm. Home party? Where's the champagne? Oh, you ought to let him have it right now. Now, wait till after the fight. You've been talking to Larry, huh? Why should I? I steer clear of Larry when Joey's around. Joey? You don't like Joey, do you, Barnett? Do you? You trying to tell us you didn't deliver Joey's message? What message? All right. The fight goes on a television in 20 minutes. We'll find out then if you did or not. Come on. Mills is still carrying the fight. It's Mills with the left of the jaw, Mills with the right to the body. And Rob is in trouble. Come on, Tiger. Come on, Tiger. Come on, Tiger. That's it. Now Rob is bleeding for the mouth. It's been Mills' fight all the way. Mills lands a beautiful right to Rob's jaw, and Larry's hurt. And it, Tiger. Come on, finish him up. And Rob is down. That left foot did it. Three, four, five. He's hurt. Six, seven, eight, nine. And Rob is on his feet. One more, Tiger. Mills comes in. Rops comes back in a terrific right to the chin. Mills is staggered. He's hurt. Rops goes to the right, the left, the right. And Mills is down. He's down. Tiger, get up, Tiger. Please, Tiger. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's out. <laughs> Just dial O, will you? In about another count of ten, we'll all be doing a little road work to police headquarters. but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You will witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.